Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and today I've got a great video for you because we have yet more cool goodies in the lab from NZXT. This time it's not cases though, it's motherboards. So last week we looked at the H7, the H7 Flow and the H7 Elite cases. You can see a link to those in the banner above or in the description below. Three fantastic new cases focusing on aesthetics, airflow or price and I really, really like them. They had lots of tool-free fittings, which I always like. So the side panels just pop off, all sorts of stuff like that. Really, really great cases. This time though, we're looking at motherboards and they are the N7 and the N5. So we've had H7. N7 is something going on here, probably. Uh, obviously NZXT looking to offer products so you can basically build your entire PC with its products. Um, that's the way things are going. And the N5 and the N7 marking kind of a change in NZXT's approach to motherboard launches. We've already had Z590, B550, for example, from NZXT and ASRock. But this time though, is the first time we're actually getting two different motherboards at launch. So they're both Z690 for Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs, but this time we're getting the cheaper one, the M5, and the more expensive one, the N7. Did I get that right the right way around? I did, bonus. Um, so yeah, these two are quite different in terms of their mostly to do with their aesthetic uh, appeal. Um, the N7 going all out with the all black or all white color scheme, those uh, kind of clip-on covers, only this time they're magnetic and a whole lot easier to use. And also we've got a, uh, a big fix uh, in terms of M.2 cooling because the clip-on covers last time did kind of seal your M.2 SSD in a chamber that just basically meant it cooked itself. Not quite cooked itself, but it got way too hot for my liking. This time though, we have a heatsink. So NZXT has sold my, solved my main issue that I had with its previous motherboards uh, with a heatsink. And that's great to see a motherboard manufacturer actually listening to people that are reviewing their motherboards and actually making those changes and uh, basically creating something that we all want to buy and use in our own PCs. So pricing then is where the main difference is though, the N5 retailing for around $230, which is kind of average for a low to medium end uh, Z690 motherboard. The N7 retailing for a fair bit more because of all that aesthetic prowess that, that it has, and it retails for around $300. So that's the price, those, those are the prices that have been given to me um, in the press pack for these two motherboards. So what we're gonna do today is just check out the N7, see how it performs and uh, what it looks like. I've got Cosmo, my water cool test bench here. He'll be doing uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the testing today. And uh, as you can see with uh, any color coolant, these color motherboards look fantastic. White is pretty neutral in terms of colors and um, obviously going really well with white memory. We've got some Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB memory there, and uh, also white graphics cards. There aren't that many around, but Gigabyte makes some, and a few others do as well. Um, obviously, white motherboards are pretty rare in themselves. I think for Z690, there aren't that many. Um, Gigabyte make, m m might make one or two. Asus maybe something that's a little kind of more chromey, silvery, but still with some white details. But NZXT absolutely killing it with the white theme, or indeed black theme. Um, basically, everything that you see on this motherboard here, this is the N7, um, you can that is white, will be black on the black version of the N7. So we'll be taking a look at the N7 today and uh, hopefully putting the N5 through its paces in a, in a week or two, and um, just working out whether you should buy it or not, basically. So another point I should add about these two motherboards is that they are DDR4 only. That means that they can aim for those slightly lower price points. And if you wanna transplant your DDR4 memory or you're trying to save as much money as possible, DDR4 is still much cheaper than DDR5. These are uh, the motherboards for you because they are DDR4 memory. So if you want DDR5, you're gonna to have to look elsewhere because there are no DDR5 versions of these motherboards. They are focusing primarily at the low to medium end, um, but still with plenty of premium features. So that's it from the intro. Uh, we'll, what we'll do now is take a look at the motherboard in detail, just a quick walk around about what you get on the rear panel and on the motherboard itself, and uh, then run through some performance numbers and come to some conclusions at the end. Before then though, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also don't forget to turn on those notifications if you do subscribe so you are notified when I release 
a new video. Lots of exclusive content here on Crazy Tech Lab. And also don't forget to like and comment on this video too. The comments always appreciated whether they're about my video or about the product in question, or even if you wanna ask a question about another product or your system build, I'm always on here. Uh, always here on hand to answer your questions. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Okay, so here is the N7 in all its glory. And uh, as you can see, kind of familiar with the uh, the socket uh, and slot caps over here. So obviously these aren't all, this isn't all one piece here. They are actually removable. And if I just take one off down here, you'll see how much easier it is thanks to just magnets holding that in place. Underneath here though, you've got the large heatsink for the top M.2 slot. Uh, there are th uh, three M.2 slots, I believe, in total. So we're going down over here now to pull that down. And uh, as you can see, I've actually run the RGB lighting cable from the water block all the way down here to the uh, RGB port on the south end of the motherboard. So that's uh, they're actually kind of quite a useful place for tucking cables like that. And um, yeah, super easy to remove as well. They come off just like that, but the magnets do hold it in place so uh, strongly enough. So if you're going to a LAN party or moving it around, they're not likely to uh, to come loose. But to be honest, they don't weigh that much, so they wouldn't do that much damage anyway. So inside, we can see that we have with the um, N7 802.11ac uh, sorry, AX Wi-Fi on this one. So um, I think there's Wi-Fi included on both motherboards. Here, the pretty unsightly module is uh, is actually hidden here. And funnily enough, uh, talking about unsightly Wi-Fi modules, the uh, the module on the N5 is actually coloured black. So they've <laughs> just kind of penciled in over the top of here just to make it um, uh, not stand out as much as it would do um, like this. But here, obviously, we don't need to worry about that because uh, we have the um, the socket uh, caps sitting over it. So I'm just going to remove the heatsink and we can see what we've got underneath. Such a great inclusion here from NZXT. I know other motherboard manufacturers have the heatsinks, but it's just nice when a motherboard manufacturer uh, listens to your concerns, and we certainly had concerns last time. So a pretty standard heatsink. Um, you've just got a thermal pad on one side and... Um, uh, but it is quite a large heatsink as well, and uh, the thermals we'll look at um, in a little bit. So, but they were obviously much improved compared to the original. So, other features I really like on this board are the uh, power and reset buttons up here. Um, always useful when testing your motherboard out of the case before you put it in, which I recommend everybody does. But also, just if you're if you're a benchmarker like me, um, it's just handy having those buttons there doing that kind of thing. And um, also, if you just forget to connect up the power cables and you just want to test the board or whatever, they're just they're just useful to have. And uh, reset button, obviously, depending on whether your case, you might not have a reset button if your PC's frozen and you want to reset rather than power off for whatever reason. Um, that's another uh, another good option there. So not too many other um, overclocking and testing tools here, though. There's no um, LED postcode display or anything like that. Uh, it's mainly to do with cooling. So we have a whole bunch of four pane fan headers and each of these is controllable in the CAM software, which is pretty useful. There are also some high power proprietary RGB LED headers for use with uh, NZXT's own RGB system. But we do get, um, I believe, both three pin and four pin um, LEDs, which you can see uh, over here. So I've got one of them hooked up and the other one is just below. So you can, connect standard RGB lighting to this motherboard as well and uh, control it um, through the software. So if we flip up, another feature I really like is uh, is down here. You can see the ports, SATA ports, and the USB 3 port, uh, the USB 3 header, should I say, all right angled and uh, kind of hidden away from everything else. So that's why the top side of this board just looks so clean because you've got no SATA ports or anything sticking out there. Uh, not so with the other ports. So underneath here, you can see the uh, the USB uh, type C header in there. So we've got one of those and uh, the ATX connector. It is It does have a cutout, but it's not right angled. I think right angled would probably have been the icing on the cake here, but uh, unfortunately we haven't got that in this instance. So as well as differences elsewhere, we've got differences in the VRMs too. So the N5 
has nine phases for the CPU, whereas the N7, which we've got here, has 13 CPU power phases. So slight difference there, but it's probably not gonna make a whole lot of difference in the overall scheme of things, given that the high-end CPUs such as the 12900K and 12900KS don't generally offer that much overclocking headroom. And if you're going for something like a Core i5, 12600K, which does benefit from manual overclocking and that kind of stuff, that's obviously a much easier CPU to deal with. Moving on to the rear I.O. panel then, and you get a Type-C port, which is full USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 compatible, plus two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, three USB 3 ports, and two USB 2 ports, bringing the total number of Type-A ports to a reasonably generous seven. There's also the full complement of audio jacks, including an optical output. For the Realtek 1220 audio, you also get USB BIOS flashback and CMOS clear buttons, antennas for the 802.11 uh, AX Wi-Fi, and HDMI output if you want to use your CPU's onboard graphics. And finally, the LAN port is Realtek and it is 2.5 gigabit. Moving on to the M.2 temperatures now then, and thankfully NZXT seems to have fixed things here courtesy of that heatsink, in the top slot at least, and uh, whereas previous versions of this motherboard, both on Z590 and B550 chipsets, uh, saw the SSD quickly rise above 70 degrees C and then it throttled, massively cutting back the uh, read and write speeds. Here on the Z690 board, uh, that's not the case. The peak temperature after a five minute load test in crystal disk mark, uh, fully loading the SSD was just 45 degrees C. So that's a massive improvement and uh, it's glad to see NZXT has solved this issue in the top slot at least. So moving on to NZXT cam now then, and uh, some, this is the latest version that's compatible with the motherboard. And uh, I can honestly say that I didn't really have too many issues with it, certainly not in the cooling department. But one issue I did have, which was kind of strange, is the inability to set a specific solid color with the RGB lighting. Uh, that's not something I've encountered before. Um, I'm assuming that if I had an N NZXT uh, proprietary cable and connected device that would maybe change things but here I can't seem to create the lighting I can adjust the actual brightness as you can see there on the slider um, I can select or view all the connected devices on RGB and if I select from one of the presets it does actually change the color and my water block uh, changed according to whatever preset I was using but even uh, creating my own profile didn't seem to offer up any uh, options as far as changing the color goes or setting a solid color, which is kind of weird. So I'm going to be stepping out and uh, calling up a, a NZXT there to see what the issue with uh, with this is. Um, cooling though is uh, is pretty good. You can select from uh, various ways to control fan speeds, such as uh, adjusting the custom fan curve. You can select from the CPU or the GPU in terms of the cooling input or from performance and silent fan modes, as well as the fixed RPM speed if you just want uh, that fan or fans to sit at a fixed speed all the time. And uh, the rest of the menus are pretty, pretty standard. You can update the software, um, you can select which panels are available and that kind of thing. So really only the, the only issue for me here is the inability to manually control the lighting color, particularly on uh, just standard three pin and four pin LED strips. So what do we make of the N5 and N7 then? Well, for me, the pick of the bunch is undoubtedly the N7. Um, I just love the way it looks. If I was building a white PC or a black PC, or just in any way, shape or form, kind of using those, uh, those color schemes as the heart of my PC, then there aren't really any other better options than the N7. Um, I think in terms of how extensive the white color is on the motherboard, I mean, you can see it here, it it's pretty much covers the whole of the PCB. There aren't that many other options. Now, other motherboards do have like snazzy heat sinks and RGB lighting and that kind of stuff, but that's not for everybody. And I can fully appreciate that. So that's where these boards are coming in. You also get the software control with cam. I didn't have any problems with it at all this time. Um, rebooting, firing up, controlling all my uh, fan headers automatically. I know that a lot of you um, have had problems with it in the past and will probably want to avoid it in future. 
but the great thing is is that you don't technically need to use it um, you can use your own fan hub or fan controller the only downside is that there is no graphical user interface to what we used to with both ASRock, Gigabyte, ASUS and MSI in terms of controlling your fans. You've only got the section where you have all the, the actual options um, in text and you have to basically adjust every single it, it, every individual option rather than actually having a fan curve to play with. So there is no, there is no fan curve based uh, GUI fan control in the BIOS of either of these two motherboards. You're, you're basically encouraged to use cam so if you don't use cam you just need to be aware of the fact that you will need to find some other way of controlling your fans either the slightly more complicated way of tweaking individual settings in the and the efi or using your own fan hub fan hub etc so apart from that i really really like these two motherboards they're well priced 300 dollars for the n7 and about 230 dollars for the N5, both of them use DDR4 as well, so you'll be saving a bit on uh, on buying that memory. I'm kind of in two minds about whether to go DDR5 or not. I think with the new speeds coming in uh, that are way above where we were at launch, once those are in and they're more affordable and more of us are taking taking them up, the prices will come down, and that's kind of going to set the set the um, the pace for not just the rest of Z690's life, but we've got socket AM5 coming as well, and that will be DDR5 only there will be no ddr4 socket am5 motherboards so i wouldn't say it's short-sighted vendor nzlxt here i think these motherboards are designed to suit a certain market and that market right now is ddr4 because intel supports ddr4 on intel 12th gen so i can see where it's coming from and i think for now it works um in terms of the N5, it's obviously not quite as lavishly equipped in terms of aesthetics or features, but it does still have an M.2 heatsink, not quite as essential on here as it is on the N7, because the N7, with all that aesthetic prowess going on, all the, all the shrouds and everything, the M.2 SSD did get pretty darn hot on previous motherboards. Um, so great to see that heatsink included, not just on the N7, but on the M5 as well. So. Both of these boards, um, retail availability is pretty much immediate as of today when they're launching. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody does with them in their builds. For me though, as I mentioned earlier, the N7 is probably my pick of the bunch just because I love color matching in my PC and with some of the H7 cases from NZXT as well that we looked at in my previous video, the H7 in white um, would just make for an absolutely amazing white themed PC just, to, just thanks to the extent uh, the, which the uh, the white theme is going on there with that motherboard and white graphics cards you know for a few options out there as well so that's it for me today i want to thank nzlxt for sending over the samples and uh, don't forget to like comment and subscribe also always love hearing about what you guys have to say either about these products or whether you're you're using one of these products and want to uh, ask me a question or whether it's a general build question always happy to answer those questions in the comments so don't forget to check out my other videos like comment and subscribe and i will see you soon